so now we're going to throw the moon in here. And the most noticeable thing about the moon is the phases. We'll talk about its orbit and all that stuff in a little bit, but if you look up and see the moon, you can tell it has a particular phase. Sometimes it's full, sometimes it's less than full. So let's uh, figure out how that works. First, I have a figure up here, just on the concept of phase. Phase isn't inherent to the moon, it's inherent to any object that's being illuminated from one angle and viewed from another. But here's a picture taken by a spacecraft, I think it was the Galileo spacecraft going out to Jupiter in the 90s, and on its way out it turned around and took this picture of the moon and the earth, and you can see they both have a phase. In this picture, in which direction is the sun? Yeah, the sun's over there, it's illuminating it this way. If we were standing kind of beside the sun, without getting burnt, we'd look and we'd see a full earth and a full moon. We're standing over here, behind the objects, we'd see a new earth, if you want to call it that, a dark earth and a new moon, because the illuminated side would be away from us. So it's all about the direction in which the object is illuminated and where you are standing when you're viewing it, or where it is relative to you. So let's illustrate this. Let's have uh, two volunteers. Got one, one, two, okay? So let's see, I'm going to be the sun. There's, I got my sun here. One of you can be the moon, and one of you can be the earth. So let's put the earth right here. So you get to be the earth, so you get to stand here. Now let's see, let's uh, put you over here, and you'll be the moon. Now you're going to, let me turn the lights out as well. So this is a pretty simple thing, but sometimes you don't think about it when you see these faces. So you're the earth, and you're going to report what you see. You're all going to see something different because you're viewing this from a different perspective. But think about what Earth here sees. So what fraction, sorry about blinding you, um, but take a look at the moon there. What, you know, what phase is that? Cool, okay. Now you're going to orbit around Earth counterclockwise from the top, so that means you come this way. Now you're going to be standing right there, okay. And now you can turn around Earth and look at the moon. And uh, that's right, the moon can turn around and not get blinded. And uh, what do you see? Quarter moon, that's right. It's half illuminated, but we don't call it a half moon. We call it a quarter moon. We just do. And, uh, okay, very good. Moving on. And look, Yeah, I know. Uh, what do you see? Yeah, depending on where you put your eye. Um, here, go ahead and lower the moon a little bit so we don't climb. Okay, we'll remove the possibility of solar eclipse. What do you say? New moon. Okay, and come on over here. And, and, yeah. What do you say? Okay, what do you say? Crescent, or if I, were do, if I was doing it right, it would be another quarter moon, yeah. And then we have the full moon again. That makes sense? Okay. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. So, four. Okay, so here it is in figure form, what we just did, uh, using a softball and some better source of illumination than a flashlight. Points A, C, E, and G. So they're intermediate steps that we'll see in the next slide. Again, this is just review. From point A, you see a new moon, or a new baseball in this case. Uh, C, uh, that's the first quarter. So so after noon, we have first quarter, comes around its full moon, then you have third quarter, and back to noon. Then you have all these intermediate steps. We heard the word crescent, and that's the correct word. So here is our new moon, where it's almost completely blocked. Now, if the moon's, as you saw, I lowered the moon a little bit, so we didn't have an eclipse. And we'll talk about eclipses in a bit. But if it's a little bit low or a little bit high, you might get a little crescent of illumination above or below. If it's not perfectly aligned, you might get a sliver. But you never see it because it's right next to what in the sky? The moon, when it's a new moon. It's right next to the sun. And so, you know, you, you just can't see it. It's during the daytime, next to a bright object. No one ever sees a new moon. So as, as you move a little bit in this direction, it can become crescent. And they show a little bit of a crescent here. And then you can see it right when the sun sets. Now, it's moving away from the sun. And so you have a little bit of a crescent of illumination. The sun sets, the moon will be hanging there right above the horizon, and you see the little crescent pointed downwards. Have you ever seen that before, a little wisp of the moon? Okay, so that's that phase there. As it continues to move away from the sun in the sky, 
we have a waxing crescent. Waxing means it's getting bigger. And so it's still a crescent shape, which means it's less than half illuminated, so it's not quite a quarter moon yet. First quarter, waxing gibbous. So gibbous is the word for if you're more than a quarter. It's the counterpart to crescent. And here it's still getting bigger, so it's a waxing gibbous. I have a little uh, uh, cocker spaniel, black and white party mix. She's like 11 years old, blind, doesn't do anything except eat. And of course, she's getting really fat now, so we call her waxing gibbous. Uh, she doesn't seem to mind. Here we have a uh, full moon. Uh, and here we have waning gibbous. Waning means it's now getting smaller, so it's the kind of part of waxing. Third quarter, waning crescent, and back to new moon. Now, I'm not going to test you on waxing and waning and crescent and gibbous, but you might hear those terms, and that's just what they mean. This is a uh, sunset. We've got east on the left, looking at the southern sky, west on the right. And this is something I want you to try to do. I didn't actually write it down formally as an exercise. Maybe I'll, I'll do that in the future. But this is something that uh, you should start to pay attention to. So it's not just to go out, oh, there's the moon. It actually makes sense, the phase and where it is in the sky compared to the sun. And of course, the sun's moving across the sky over the course of the day. A good time uh, to do this is during sunset or around sunset. And what we hear, have here are snapshots over the course of half of the month. And so shortly after new moon, you have the little wispy crescent, and it's very close to the sun in the sky. Again, new moon is pretty much aligned, not perfectly, you'd have an eclipse, but pretty much aligned with the sun. As it moves in its orbit, it gains some separation from the sun, but it's close in the sky. Normally, you won't see it that close to the sun, but as soon as the sun sets, the sky starts to darken, and you can see the crescent moon. Have you ever seen that, the little wispy crescent just above the horizon after sunset? It's kind of a nifty thing to see. You've got to look for it, though, because it's only visible for that short period of time after sunset, and then it <coughs> almost immediately sets afterwards because it's, it's, you know, it's moving across the sky from east to west. And it's something to look for. And you know, day to day, it's going to keep moving farther and farther from the sun and the sky. You're going to get some uh, separation. So after sunset, uh, you'll be able to see the crescent longer. And eventually, it gets to the point that the moon is far enough from the sun and more and more of it's illuminated that you can see it in the daytime sky. And so this is a big misconception that people have, and I can understand why. I, I have a nine-year-old, so in the, the years previous, I've gone through all the children's cartoons, and they always tell you, you know, the sun's up during the day, the moon's up at night. And that's not really true. The moon's up at night half the time, and it's up during the day half the time. It's just during the day, it's less noticeable, but you can see it. You can't see it when it's a thin little crescent close to the sun, but once you get some separation, you can see the moon during the day. For example, there's the quarter moon, and then eventually you get out to, uh, works its way across the sky, and full moon. So on the day of a full moon, it will rise when the sun is setting. It's exactly opposite in the sky. So you'll notice sunset, and up will come the full moon in the eastern sky. They'll be opposite. So the phases, you can make a correlation between the phase of the moon and where it is in the sky compared to the sun. Another interesting thing to keep in mind, and I don't think it's well drawn in this diagram, but if you look at the phase, suppose you have a crescent moon, it's like a little arrow. Let me draw it here on the dot cam. So if you see a crescent in the sky, the crescent's like an arrow. It points to where the sun is. The sun is over here, illuminating in this direction, even if it's below the horizon. So the crescent always points to where the sun is in the sky or, or below the horizon. Even if it's gibbous, which would be like this, you know, here's the full moon, here's a gibbous moon where this part here is illuminated. You think of it as kind of a fat arrow. It always points to where the illumination is. As I was saying before, you know, all the objects in the solar system have a phase illuminated by the sun as viewed from the Earth. Here you actually have two objects. I said the, the new moon you can't see, but very soon it becomes a wisp of a crescent. And here you can see it, the big crescent filling most of the picture is the moon. And, and so, you know, to the right in the picture, that's the moon. There's a cloud in front of it, and most of it's in darkness. But just to the left of the moon is another little crescent. Anyone want to guess what object that is? It's a planet, a planet that's very bright. 
So anyone want to guess? Venus. Yeah, that's Venus. So that's Venus in crescent phase. 